Hello, so this video is going to be something that I, similar to something I started a while ago on my blog, uh, I called it What Makes Good Design. It was basically like a series where I would take either like design pens from Pinterest or just like designs I found anywhere and just kind of review them and like talk about what I like about them, why I think they're good, um, and just like overall what yeah, what makes good design and what I think makes it good and balanced and fresh and all that good shit. Um, so yeah, I've got a few lined up from Pinterest and then maybe I'll scroll through my pins. Um, I'll also leave the link to my Pinterest board in the description if you want to check it out because I have a few. I'm always kind of just adding stuff in there in my design board. Um, so yeah, we'll start with what I've got already lined up. So I've just got like a few up here and I'll put the links to these as well. Um, I can zoom in on some of them. So this one, I, I think a lot of, I mean, you might notice that a lot of the stuff I'm drawn to, I really think photography is a massive a uh, massively important thing in design. Um, it's something I place a lot of weight into and like there is a whole art to the curation of photography and design I think which is something I might talk about a little bit more in the future and I have talked about it in like my Squarespace course and other places just because I think it's so important and can, it can like make or break anything. So I think first of all like the photos here are like what kind of drew me to it. So I think the tones of this one on the left and then the tones of like the black and white one, um, I'm not sure what any of this says. So I don't know like exactly what this is for or anything. I mean, I could, I'll just click through in a second. Um, but yeah, I think the overall photography is what kind of got me. And the combination of like a color photo and a black and white photo can sometimes work really well. Um, in this case, I think it really does. Um, and specifically the way they've edited the black and white one, assuming it's edited and it's not, like it could be just a film black and white straight out of a camera, it's not edited at all. Um, but yeah, I like how it's kind of not too contrasty. I feel like it fits the vibe of the whole thing. Um, so even just that really simple like split screen 50-50 between the image, even just that alone without this design in the middle, um, I think that curation of those two photos just work really well together. Um, like the composition is different, like this one you've got kind of close up and it's a lot of green tones going on. Um, and then this one is like a little bit more pulled back and it's like obviously a person and there's like a decent amount of kind of negative slash white space in both like there's got a big like kind of space here and then this it's not like so much white space but like where it's kind of blurry you can tell the there's like an image right in front of the lens that kind of lends itself to be a little bit out of focus so it's not like um I think when you're like choosing two photos like this it's again there's like a whole art to it I could like talk about it forever but I think having like different compositions and different placement of the subject in each photo is really important uh so yeah overall solid selection of photos and then also this little kind of stamp situation in the middle I really like um it's pretty simple and I think the fonts look really good I think the only thing I would say that looking at it closely is that like the spacing, like the curve doesn't look totally, like you can see how on the left and the right there's quite a thin amount of space between the edge and the text and then at the top and the bottom there's like quite, there's like a pretty decent amount more space so it looks like the text like could be on more of a curve to match the exact curve of the shape if that makes sense. It's like a very minor detail and maybe they did that on purpose. Um, but yeah, I think the fonts look good. I think it's just like overall really balanced. I love it. The photography is what got me. But yeah. 
And I did just click through to the Behance link. Sometimes they go off to weird places, so I just clicked on it to make sure it actually went there. Uh, but yeah, obviously this is like a branding project. Um, so we can like quickly look at the rest of the entire brand. So again, I've got like that same shape throughout the whole brand, it looks like. Um, yeah, the photography is really nice. I really like this font too. But yeah, there's like the high res close up version. So yeah, overall dig it. Um, yeah I love this too I think that looks awesome and this is like it looks like they've used the same photo um, and this is like the background and then the same photo is placed in here it kind of looks like um, which is kind of another fun way to like get the most out of one single photo um, like sometimes if I could if you wanted to play around with a bunch of different ideas with like layers of stuff like you could even take the same photo and like flip it like flip it horizontally or vertically and then play with the cropping like zoom in and out or you could do the background like a split screen like that same 50 50 but all use the same image and just play around with this like flipping it and scale and everything um yeah I really like this series it feels like the there's the same stamp again. But yeah, solid branding. So yeah, that's the first one. The next one I have is this uh, website for a skincare brand. See, I just clicked through to the Behance again because it's obviously a bit higher res. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first thing, if we just quickly look at it, because the thing about... Pinterest I like is that you get like a full view of something so I mean initially initially I love the simplicity of this and I also really like the green I think another thing I'm kind of drawn to is colors that are a little different from what you're used to seeing in like certain spaces so I really love this green especially like using solid colors as a background I feel like sometimes people are like kind of scared to do that and they think it should just be white or like really simple but it doesn't have to be like I think if you find a color that w I think it's important to find a color that works that you can easily read the text over it because that's one thing where you can really easily like fuck it up is you have a color that is like way too contrasty or it just makes it really hard to read the text over the top and that is like really not what you want because then people are just going to get frustrated and leave the website but I really like this green like it's not too dark so the contrast between the text and the background isn't too like blinding like if you've ever tried to look at like a hundred percent black on top of like fully white text it would it's kind of hard to read like it's too there's too much contrast like um I think a lot of designers like I hardly ever use a hundred percent black kind of for that reason like it's just too harsh um but yeah dig this color um I really like this font as well this I'm assuming that's the logo font um yeah the lines um the lines if we would make it like really clean and neat without being like too flat um, and you can also tell that like they're obviously using the same thickness line everywhere and the same on the border of the image. So I think that's kind of important is like consistency through whatever you're doing. So it's not like thick and thin all over the place. Um, but yeah, while we're here, we can check out the rest of the brand because it looks pretty sweet. And I think I've also seen the packaging before. Um, but yeah, obviously they're like big on simplicity. Um, I don't love the packaging as much. I feel like it would look better if like it was spaced out a lot more. Like if the logo was right at the top, the information was right at the bottom and then the text was like right in the middle. I feel like it's kind of like wasted space or something with it just, it looks like there's maybe a sticker on there. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, 
yeah, like the pack, the design of that is really nice. Yeah, and obviously that's like a product page on the website, which is really nice. It's like very clean, like there's no trying to like figure out what's going on or like anything. And like the menu looks really clean, assuming oh, it keeps doing the thing. Assuming that's the menu, like one, two, three, four, just like the products and then I'm guessing down the bottom is where they have the links to like more info, which is a really good way to keep the menu simple and keep it like very clean and just like, here's what we do, here's what you can buy. And then most people know that like the footer is where there's more links for like specific shit. Um, yeah. But yeah, as a product page, this is like super clean and simple. Quickly see if there's anything else. Mobile website. I mean, the photography is amazing. Like, again, it's so good. So, yeah, that's that one. And then this one I just chose, chose quickly because it was, like, in my... Um, in my design inspo folder. I keep all of my design inspo in one folder. I don't like having separate folders for like photo effects or website design or logo design or whatever like I like having it all in one place because I think a lot of for me personally a lot of the things can like transfer over to one another so I just like having it kind of all in one place just like all visual and spot in one spot so yeah I had this image in there and I kind of I chose it to talk about here because I really love the like sepia effect on images um this sepia is like pretty strong you can like dial it way down so it's not as intense um and you can do it with other colors too but i think the sepia effect just looks awesome and it's just a really really simple way to like mess around with the photo photography um so ideally you kind of want to start with a black and white image and then just mess around with sepia tones and like photoshop or like any program you just do an overlay and there's like a million different ways you can try it but um i just wanted to throw it in here because i love it as an effect um and you can play around with the intensity and everything but yeah when you're using photography sometimes it's fun to like mix it up and try some effects on the photos uh so yeah Next one is another website design. I just really like the text on this one. I feel like it's so bold and simple. Um, and just like the massive text. I think it's really fun when designers play around with scale of like text and images and everything. Um, and obviously that like I, I don't, can't read this. I'm not totally sure what language this is in. But... Like playing around with the text that people will be looking for the most. So like assuming this is obviously some kind of restaurant. Um, like the fact that most people, if they're going to look them up, maybe they're going to be looking for their phone number to like ring them and book. So I feel like having that massive, maybe that's a part of the strategy or whether it is or isn't. I think it just looks awesome. And then again, like maybe this is the name and then the email is kind of like second biggest um but yeah honestly I just like this because of the scale of like the text and also the layout is like quite different to what you see from websites um again they've got the grid with the thin lines which kind of breaks it all up I think without without the lines it, it might still work but it might feel like a bit more all over the place but yeah I thought that was cool about that one. Just like the big text, big photos and like grid layout. And then this one. This one I just really liked. The. I'm guessing this. I mean, this could be a website or a printed thing. It could be, it could be literally anything. 
Um, I mean, I really love uh, like layout design. Um, that's kind of what I've always loved the most. And like I've brought that into a lot of my website design and stuff online. So I feel like that's what, what I'm drawn to a lot is like layouts that are just like editorial kind of vibes. Um, which maybe you could tell already by the few that I've chosen, but, um, I just really like the layout of this text. Like it's so simple, uh, but it just really works. And there's a ton of like blank space, white space to like let everything breathe. Um, and it just looks awesome. Like, so I'm assuming this is the name of the piece, whatever it is. And then just like tagline and then the February issue. And then this is kind of a cool way to add like the info of the issue in the year. Um, yeah, overall, I just think this layout is really good. Um, you could, and this would be something that would easily look good with like, you could play around with different fonts and like layers in the background or whatever, just because there's so much space. Like I love using like handwriting like layers, like scribbly layers in the background and stuff like that. So I'd probably, if I did something like this, I would probably mess around with that just because that's what I like. Um, and like assuming if this was a website, this could definitely be like a scrolling text bar. Um, but again, even if it's not, like that can, that totally looks fine and cool static. I do really like using that like strip of repeating text, um, I started using it like in one of my Canva template bundles a few years ago and I really loved it and I've kind of put it in other places on like client websites. Um, I had a client website last, I think it was last year, B Bosnack. Um, she's a entrepreneur, badass. And I kind of used that over the top of images throughout her website. It kind of gave it like a really cool editorial look. Um, and I know she really liked it too. So yeah, I just, I think that like strip of text always looks kind of cool. Um, yeah, overall, that's pretty much it for that one. This one is some social media templates. Yeah, so I just clicked through to the website. Um, I think these templates are just really simple. I mean, I guess what drew me to this whole thing was the photography, uh, again, but this is obviously a template pack. So if you brought it, you would need your own photography. Um, but yeah, I think the layouts are really simple. I mean, template packs, like I have a lot of template packs on my shop on Good as Gold. Sometimes I kind of struggle with designing them because it's like, when they're templates, you've got to keep it simple enough that people can use it. But it also is like kind of interesting and not just like the same as literally everything else that already exists. So that's kind of the hard thing I find about templates. But these ones have some uh, cool layouts. Let me see. Yeah, like even just like this kind of thing. I'm sure if I have probably have some in my packs that are like similar. We have like the big text at the top and like smaller text at the bottom. Um, even doing like the split paragraph two column situation is kind of fun to mix it up just from like a single block of text. Um, like you kind of always default to a lot of the time. Um, this layout here I kind of liked with the little boxes. Just to, again, like, make it a bit more interesting than just listing out things. Um, yeah. So, yeah, pretty simple, but solid. I think I have a couple more. This one, again, I think I just chose this one because of the color. I just, like, haven't seen this color green very much. Um, and... That was kind of it. Like the photography didn't really grab me that much. Let me see. And the other thing with the colors here is that it looks like... Oh yeah, we can see some more from this. Let 
we can say that the colors kind of like I was saying before like when you're using block bold colors in the background of websites and there's going to be text over the top you got to be really uh, selective with the colors that you chose for the text so here we can say that they've got this green and then the color over the top is kind of like a darker green uh, so it makes it quite easy to see like some of the tech the smaller text is a bit harder to read but I think that's just because I'm like this is a low res ish version um, yeah that, I'm not sure if the website's live or not so I'll just look at these previews this is obviously the portfolio of it um, but yeah that can be another really good like tip is when you're using like a color like a bold color use like a darker shade of that for the text or for borders and stuff over the top so it doesn't it doesn't always have to be black or white you just got to make sure that like readability is the number one when especially when it's like a business website or something that needs to be readable I don't think design needs to be legible all the time it completely depends what it's for but like obviously in this case it does you need to read it um so yeah that can be just like a really good easy tip is like just use like a darker shade if it's like a medium to light shade in the background mess around with some darker shades of that same kind of tone um yeah I also kind of like this this background these colors are kind of interesting too it's like a kind of like a bluey color and then it looks like that same that same darker green which looks pretty good um yeah so that was pretty much that was all I wanted to say about that one and I think I have one more this one oh it's a moving one so yeah this one is I might just go back here because it's I don't want the moving one this one I kind of just liked because of the negative space and the image is the images and the colors um okay there we go um yeah I really like it usually like for some reason I just don't like red that much I rarely ever use it in my designs I don't know why um it just doesn't get me but I like it when I see it in other designs and it looks cool and it works um so yeah this one's kind of cool in that like literally all of the text is red um I'm not sure if that would be the case across the whole website but I think it's kind of fun that they've like fully committed to it and it's red everywhere um I feel like using really bold colored text like especially red and sometimes yellow like they can be like kind of like cool like hip colors to fuck around with with text but when it works it does look really cool um so yeah this one just has a ton of white space which is awesome because it lets everything kind of like have its own space and it's not overwhelming um and the placement of images is really good I think I like that like this one and it's, I don't know if this is meant to scroll or not but like this one is like right to the edge and then this one has like a bit of a border um yeah I just think this the layout is really good and like the menu is kind of pretty clean this logo in the center with like links on either side um yeah I dig it um yeah I don't love the combination of these two fonts I feel like they kind of look too close together and like sizing and stuff like I think if they were like a lot more different it would might look better yeah like the, this one I think the fonts aren't my favorite I love the rest of it um but yeah we love white space we love solid photography and bold colors you know 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I was going to go through today. I won't do any more because I don't want to like do a super long video. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's kind of interesting. Again, I might do some more videos kind of like this in the future. Um, I would love to talk more about like photography and design because that's something that's pretty, that's like been a big part of my work from day one, really. Like since I've been doing design like over 10 years or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I might do some videos about that in the future, just like how uh, I approach it, how to curate photography and like some cool ways to edit photography. Um, all of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was kind of fun and interesting and, um, yeah, see you soon.